Hello, my name is Kelly Selden, and I want to talk about a little tool I made called Why is CI Broken? So the problem, all new PRs are failing for the same cryptic reason. What the heck, right? CI was working fine yesterday. Uh, so you rerun master on CI and now it's failing too, even though there were no new commits. So Google gave me this definition. It's definitely real. More specifically, a dependency is three layers deep, updated, introduced a bug, violated semper, or was deleted. So let's break this down. Uh, don't mean to pick on any specific add-ons, I just chose at random, so forgive me. You decide to install the Ember Browserify add-on into your Ember app. And you give it a version hint of major and put it at 1.0.0. Alright, so you're chugging along and yesterday it was at 1.0.0 and today they released a fix or a new feature. 1.1.0. And you get it because of your version range. Uh, but it, it had a catastrophic error in it, and now your stuff's broken. So what do you do? You go into your package JSON, and you remove the hint, and you want to lock yourself down at 1.0. Point oh. So everything's good now, right? Your app's working. Even though today the new uh, update came out, you don't get it because you're locked in at 1.0.0. All right, everything good. Well, Ember Browserify has an add-on itself on Browserify, and it has a version range on 13.0.0, major version. And they happen to release an update as well today, a little point release, but had a huge bug in it, broke everyone's app using it. So what do you do now? You go into Ember Browserify and you submit an issue saying, hey, uh, the new version of Browserify is breaking everyone. Let's let's remove the version hint. They're like, okay, great. Take out the version hint. Gets merged in. Everyone's happy. So that new version that came out, no one's using it. It's locked at 13.0.0. All good now, right? Well, Browserify is using the lock, and it has a version range as well. Uh, a major version range. And guess what? They released a point release today too. And it had a big bug in it. Everyone's broken. Even though there was no new commits on your app over this, the course of this day. And now your app doesn't work anymore. So you can see where this is growing, right? NPM is a trust game. You're always at the mercy of your dependencies and how loose their version hints are even if you take out all the hints from your app. So here's a little rhetorical question. When you install a new dependency, do you go through the entire dependency tree and audit every single package, decide if they're using Semver right, and if uh, the version hint applied is appropriate? No, of course not. Which means your stuff is going to break. Going to break. So I made that. Um, started as a pen project to uh, help the pain points and Ember CLI maintenance. Every few months we'd run into this situation where all new PRs are failing and it take one or more core maintainers off their regular scheduled tasks to go and hunt and start digging. Uh, so this app, it isn't reliant on Ember. As long as you're using NPM have a package JSON, you can use it. All right, so demo time. Very sexy. Um, basically reads like a spreadsheet right now. But <clears throat> I'm going to feed in any old repo on GitHub. Let's just do Ember CLI for my demo's purpose. And it just starts crawling NPM. Going in. Just as deep as it needs to. What are the two dates? 
Two dates are identical right now. I'll, I'll do that in one second. Uh, I just want to go over really quickly an issue I was having. So I, I didn't have this GitHub API stuff earlier, and I kept, after reload, 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 I'm locked out. And if you're a public user, you only get 60 requests uh, every hour. So let's just do go along with it. And let me refresh, just get some new numbers. All right, a lot better. Now I have 5,000 requests. Uh, so you just authenticate and you get, you get their bigger threshold. And so, okay, now let's get some use out of this app. So let's put it to, uh, I want to see yesterday around noon to today around All right, so what's going on in Ember CLI land over a course of 24 hours? Um, here we have the complete dependency tree. It's actually still filling in, so it's going to be jumping all over the place. But it's resolving historical versions based on the semver range in the package JSON and the version list and timestamps you can find on the npm registry. So you can even uh, if you want this app to just stop working, because it goes for a while sometimes, you can just uh, stop it, and you get some all the tasks are just canceled, and then you just start back up again. And now the useful view is turn this little box on, and here are all the here are all the dependencies that change that may be responsible for your app not working anymore. And uh, this. Range I put the last 24 hours is actually extremely app. Uh, if you were uh, trying to build your app for about three hours today, you would have noticed that you had a define error. Um, we had a uh, broccoli caching writer release a new version today, and it broke everyone's app. And we actually had a few people using this, uh, trying to figure out what was going on today. And I was like, got to mention this in my talk. It's like perfect timing. And see you here. Did you release it today? No, I didn't. But I'm not going to point your fingers, man. Um, I could very well have. Uh, so we see how this is just the base Ember CLI, but if, you, if your app's on GitHub, just throw it in here. And since it has a dependency on Ember CLI, you'll see the same stuff, just a, a layer deeper. And so you see uh, we have an issue with caching writer. Now this doesn't necessarily tell you exactly where the error is, but it, it just it just narrowed down a million dependencies into uh, ten. Um, and one more example I'll show you. I have this one preloaded because uh, it takes a while to generate. But uh, this is what happened to Ember CLI March twenty second from two p.m. to three p.m. See the dates right here in this column. Um, this little tiny package called Leftpad was removed and broke everyone because everyone used Babel. Um, it looks a little funky because NPM did some fancy republishing back in time, but you can clearly see that we had some issues here uh, with Leftpad. And uh, yeah, I preloaded this because it'll take like. 10 minutes to get to this point, four layers deep. Even if you don't think this uh, app will help you in your day to day grind, uh, it's an Ember app. So you can go check out the code if you want. Uh, it uses Ember simple auth and Tori for the GitHub auth to get your 60 requests up to 5,000. Uh, it uses Ember concurrency to pause and resume crawling if you want to uh, using task cancellation. And also uses it as a request semaphore. Uh, 
uses the NQ modifier uh, so that you're not making duplicate requests. Because believe it or not, you have a lot of duplicate dependencies in your tree. I use the request limiter at 50 milliseconds per request, so you don't. I don't hammer npm's API and get locked out. And it uses a uh, various request caching. Uh, it has a memory cache and it throws all of your request responses into a memoize function. Uh, Uses Ember exam for random test order. It splits the test across multiple Travis jobs. Uses Ember to CLI code coverage for, you can guess. Uh, has an accompanying node at Express app that does the OAuth and the proxy of the NPM requests. Uh, and if you haven't noticed, <laughs> it could use some CSS. So here are some links. Uh, I'll post these wherever on my Twitter or on the meetup page. The first two are the client and server on GitHub. Third one is the web app if you want to use it up. And the fourth one is if you want to see how LeftPad affected all of us. Uh, that's the query that'll bring it up. So, thank you.